thanks for the introduction. You may all know about that uh, concurrency bugs are hard to tackle. We will give you a button. Once you click the button, you will explode the thousands of concurrency bugs. Hello, everyone. I'm Guangpu from the University of Chicago. Our paper, Efficient and Scalable Threat Safety Violation Detection, is a joint work with my advisor, Shan, my mentors, Mada and Schumann, and my collaborator, Rohan. Nowadays, concurrency programs are everywhere, in the desktop, in the mobile phone, and in the cloud. Concurrency bugs are also everywhere. It's very common to see the developers complain about the concurrency bugs. Like uh, this is uh, one monster of a race. There isn't one week going by without a new bugs about the races. And uh, there are many, many more complaints about the concurrency bugs. Outwork tackles a critical types of concurrency bugs called thread safety violation. In the object-oriented programs, there are thread safety contracts associated with the classes about which method cannot be called concurrently. A thread safety violation, or TSV, occurs if two threads concurrently invoke two conflicting methods on the same object at the same time. The outcome of this uh, thread safety violation would be crashes or mis severe misbehavior of the software. Let's take an example. In C Sharp, there is a widely used class called list in the collection namespace. The C Sharp document explicitly says the to add function cannot be invoked concurrently on the same list. Otherwise, the thread safety violation will happen and one element will be lost. Unfortunately, such a thread safety violation widely exists in practice and it's very hard to tackle during in-house testing. In 999 testing run, two concurrent core may execute it one after another. But in one production run, they are executed at the same time, causing huge problem like Bitcoin loss. In fact, it's very difficult to reason about whether there is a threat safety violation or not, particularly in the cloud service code that we target. There are all types of concurrency going on, such as multi-threading, asynchronous event processing in one node, and message passing across different nodes. And there are all kinds of standard and customized synchronization primitives out there, very hard to comprehensively reason about. You may notice that thread safety violation is very similar to data risk. With the existing data risk detection tool, detecting thread safety violation in small scale is doable. You can take a static analysis tool, tweak it so that it integrates with, with whatever concurrency or synchronization primitives used by the program, and then manually analyze the bug report to identify typically one true bug out of five to 10 false positives. Alternatively, to lower the manual effort, you can apply dynamic analysis while running the program under test inputs. For example, the happened before analysis, analysis detection. It still requires the integration like annotating all the synchronization primitives. It also needs, the, uh, needs for the positive pruning because in practice, the annotation cannot be perfect. Moreover, this will slow down the test run by about 10 times or more. Clearly, existing techniques do not work in large scale. For example, in Microsoft, their testing framework Cloud Build processes millions of union tests from 4,000 teams per day and use up to 10,000 machines to finish the testing on time. Existing static tools cannot scale for the large code base. Existing dynamics tools would require huge effort to integrate with thousands of developing teams that use different kinds of synchronization and uh, concurrency. Manually analyzing the huge number of bug reports also costs a lot. Particularly to meet the testing deadline, tens of thousands of extra machines will be needed to run those tests. 
which is unacceptable. To address all those three challenges, integration, overhead, and false positives, we designed TSVD, a, a scalable dynamic threat safety violation detection tools. Using TSVD is very easy. It does not need to know what types of concurrency exist in the program. It also does not require the knowledge about what type of synchronization is used. You only need to provide the thread safety contract, then push a button to run the program with any test inputs. When the test run finishes with only 30% overhead, thread safety violation will be reported with zero false positives. We have deployed the TSVD in Azure. So far, it has found more than 1,000 thread safety violation, more than what alternative techniques can find, even we give them more time to run. Next, let me tell you what's the secret sauce behind the TSVD. First, how to achieve zero false positives? It's simple. We can report a thread safety violation after the violation occurs. But this does not solve the problem because the thread safety violation really occur. So the real, real solution is after we identify a call site that can potentially violate the thread safety contract, next time when this call is executed again in the same run, we will insert a delay to slow it down. If a conflicting call executes during this delay, a true bug is found. Now the question is how to identify those potential unsafe calls to insert delays. There are many different options if we follow previous approach on data risk detection. We can do happen before analysis, analyze all the synchronizations in the program, and carefully identify every call that can potentially execute in parallel with the conflicting ones. Only inject the delay there. The analysis is very expensive and requires integration effort to annotate all the synchronization primitives. Or we can scan the binary file and treat every call site or every method that is a part of the thread safety contract as a potential unsafe call. This identification has almost no cost, but it will lead, it will lead too many delay injections and a huge runtime overhead. What do we do? TSVD takes a middle ground in the design space and injects delay at likely racing calls. It does not introduce tons of delay because it's selective. It also do no, does not use expensive analysis and the complicated integration because it only aims to likely racing calls. How exactly do we do that? You may all know about the, the definition of racing. Two conflicting methods based on the thread safety con contract, like two ads from different threads on the same object at exactly the same time or logically concurrent time. This is a race. To figure this out, we need expensive synchronization annotation happen before analysis, like 10 times slow down. Instead, TSVD looks for likely racing call where two conflicting calls from different threads to the same object occur within a small physical time window. No synchronization analysis need no logical time computed. For example, at runtime, TSVD tracks the physical time step of every method call. Whenever two conflicting calls has a close by time step, they are added to a likely, likely racing list. When any call site or this list is executed again in the same run, we will inject a delay. And if another conflicting call executes during the delay, we will find a bug. Very simple. Of course, we can do better. You, pro you probably already wonder what if there, are ex there is an actual uh, synchronization between two calls in a small time window. Then, no matter how we inject the delay, they will never execute it at the same time. This is particularly bad if the call is executed many times. The delay will just introduce a lot of unnecessary slowdown. 
it would be great if we can remove this peer from the likely racing list uh, to avoid those slowdown. But how can we do this without expensive what happened before or synchronization analysis? TSVD conducts lightweight synchroni synchronization inference, not synchronization analysis. The key insight is that uh, although there are many ways of implementing synch synchronization, which introduce big challenges to accurate synchronization analysis, all those synchronizations share one common effect. That is, if two calls are synchronized and close by in the physical time, delay one will cause a transitive delay of the other. Leveraging this insight when TSVD injects, injects a delay, it also monitors the progress of other threads. If another thread, thread two, cannot make progress for a long time until the end of the delay, TSVD will infer a synchronization between the delayed call in thread one and the, and the next few calls in thread two, and remove the corresponding peer from a likely racing list. This inference not only works for lock, it works for all the types of synchronizations. So far, we have covered how TSVD identify likely racing calls and how TSVD infers uh, synchronization. Actually, TSVD infer more properties. Is a program running in a sequential mode? Is a likely racing call less likely than another? If the resource allows, TSVD supports running the tests multiple times. The early runs knowledge will be inherited by the later runs. Due to time limit, please check our paper for those details. To summarize, this is how TSVD works. TSVD takes the binary as the input and the instrument them based on thread safety contract. The instrumentation is a push button design because the, our, our dynamic analysis mostly relies on the physical time step. In the runtime, TSVD maintains a likely racing call. After the program starts, TSVD adds, the, adds to the list based on the physical time step, reads the list to inject a delay, remove from the list based on the delay feedback, and report bugs. It keeps low overhead and zero false positives. If the resource allows, TSVD will pass the remaining entries in the list to the next run. We have deployed TSVD in Microsoft for several months. Let's see the results. We extract the thread safety contract of 14 system classes from C Sharp official documents. In Microsoft, we eva evaluated more than 1,000 projects and found more than 1,000 thread safety violations by running the test once or twice. During our validation procedure, 96% thread safety violations are previously unknown to the developer. 47% will cause customer facing issues eventually. We randomly sample 1,000 software components with 3,000 unit tests for the comparison. We compare with three other techniques, random injection, data collider, and the happen before tracking algorithm. We run every techniques once, and the TSVD fund, funds the largest number of thread safety violations. In terms of overhead, while others have several types of overhead, TSVD only have 33%. We also run all the techniques 50 times collect, to collect all the thread safety violations. After 50 times run, TSVD can capture 96% of all the violations, while the other technique can catch 60% at most. Half of Half of the violations can be found by just running TSVD once, which is already better than, run, than running other techniques many times. Finally, to, con to conclude the talk, TSVD is a push button thread safety violation detection tool. It infers the synchronizations and uses them in the same, same run. The tool is easy to integrate because our technique is oblivious to synchronization and the concurrency patterns. It's also lightweighted, 
only 30% runtime overhead and accurate. The evaluation result shows that TSVD has better coverage than happened before based tools. You can find an open source version TSVD here and welcome to you try it and let us know how many bugs you found. Um, hi, so I'm Chen Mai from. So, sorry, sorry. Can, can you, you speak, speak up later, um, louder? So I'm Chen Mai from, from Utah. Okay. Um, I have a question about your delays. How long are those delays and where do you place them within the function? Do you place them at the start, at the end? in the middle, and do those delays actually create false negatives because you might actually delay thread one from entering the part at which you could cause a race with thread two? So, so let, let, let me uh, try to uh, rephrase every question. The first question is uh, how long the delay it is, right? Yeah, in practice, so how long do you yeah, need in to In practice, it's uh, 100 milliseconds. OK. So while we, our evaluation, we also try different choice. You can see that. Uh, you can check our paper for our details uh, how the performance or the how the, the number of thread safety violation mm -hmm. uh, depends on the uh, I would say the durance or the delay. Okay. So the second question is uh, are you trying to ask uh, where do you place that delay? Do you pl place it at the beginning when you enter the method or do you place it at the end when you uh, when you exit the method? Uh, before or? before entering the that method. Okay. Okay, the third question is are you ask try to, trying to ask uh, whether there would be uh, false, false negatives because the delay. So, so I, which reason are you re referring? So I'm saying that there might be a case where you have a thread safety violation. Yeah. But adding that delay might actually oh, make yeah, it yeah. more so, rare for that case to occur. Oh uh, yes, theoretically that you could, uh, it's true. So that's the reason sometimes we tell that our developers saying, uh, if the resource allows, you can. Uh, you can run the tools multiple times. Okay. And, uh, yeah, of course, as you said, uh, yeah. uh, it may cause a false negative, but but uh, usually it's not that uh, our ultimate, ultimate goal is to capture all the bugs right. in one run, but okay. uh, sometimes it's just we just cannot achieve that. Awesome. So, but based on our uh, evaluation result, we already, so our, our coverage is already very good. One, if we just run it one time, so half of the uh, problem will be captured. Thank you. Jason. Hi, uh, Jason Flynn from uh, Facebook. So my question is, it, it seems like the, the thread safety contracts are a scalability, uh, the thread safety contracts might be a scalability issue. Did you consider using something like static analysis or dynamic analysis over uh, test cases to try and generate those automatically? And if so, how well does that work? Uh, so are you trying to ask uh, how to Automatically generate the uh, thread safety contract. Yeah, yeah. It seems like a like a static analysis over the class or a dynamic analysis using test cases would work really well for generating those. So I was curious if you tried it. Oh uh, yeah. So far, what we did is uh, we manually uh, read the official document. But that uh, uh, how think about how to dynamically dynamically or automatically extract the thread safety contract would be an interesting research problem. I. I only have some preliminary thoughts. Maybe we can discuss that offline. Um, thanks. Um, that's actually a good segue into my question. I'm Basta from University of British Columbia. Um, my question is, what is the granularity of the thread safety contract? Is it function call level, or can you detect thread safety violations at statement levels as well? Uh, so just uh, I want to make sure I understand your question. When, when you see function level and the lower level, so function level means uh, so what, what's the, can you? So in your example, you were saying that you're not allowed to, to call two functions concurrently, yes. right? Um, uh, so is the function. granularity at the same? At the same time. At the, is the granularity at this function level, or can you detect uh, thread safety violations at statement levels as well? Uh, so far, we only detect uh, in the function level. The reason is that uh, our thread safety contract uh, is based on the, uh, I would say, uh, function level, but if you really want to detect something, let's say, if you look at the binary code, uh, every memory access you can treat it as a function, right? And uh, then you you need to provide the thread safety contract for that memory stuff. But usually, this is this is something that depends on the hardware. It's not that easy to to do. Thank but you. One last question, I believe, FIFO order there. Yeah. Hi. 
Uh, thank you for the great talk and great work. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more about what kind of uh, safety violations uh, TSVD can find compared to other kinds of uh, safety violations that maybe happened before analysis can find? Is this, is this like a superset of those or? Uh, so if you look, uh, are you asking is, any, is there any bugs that uh, no, I mean, class, uh, the previous data, de data risk detection tools can find but uh, so a TSVD cannot find? Yeah. Uh, so here is, so I can give you, so in general, if you look at this, this table, so we found all of them. Uh, no, not all of them. There are, there are several types of false negative is caused by, because TSVD is based on the, a small time window. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we saw some extremely case that uh, if you run the program, the, the, threat, the two cores of the violation, if you look at the, the physical time distance, it has, it's uh, more than 10 minutes. So it's kind of like don't fit in our uh, concept. Uh, don't, they are not really close with each other. In that case, we need to run more times to cover them. So b because as long as they are theoretically concurrent, there could be some chance or in some real schedule that uh, two operations that are uh, scheduled very close with each other. Have you seen those in practice? Oh uh, yeah, we see uh, in our paper we have more discussion about that. We see several. Uh, examples. All right, thank you. All right, let's thank the speaker.